Hello and welcome to the Firearms Insider Gunner Gear Review Podcast. This is episode 113. On this show we showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else a gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Ryan Cross, from the Firearms Radio Network, your source for shooters, hunters, and gun enthusiasts. Uh, thanks for joining us after a uh, kind of a little bit of a break with the holidays. We didn't do an episode on the uh, we didn't record any during the Christmas week, um, which was quite a pleasant uh, reprise. But uh, we are back for the last episode of 2015. Um, I've got uh, Tony, Chad, and I've got the uh, the man himself, Rob, in me with uh, this week on the show. We're gonna be talking about some. Uh, some products, um, and I'm saving the real juicy stuff for the next episode to kind of kick off the new year, um, and, and some of these things that we're seeing coming out pre-2016 SHOT Show, so stay tuned for that. So, uh, how's it going, guys? It's awesome. going. It's great. How's it going with you guys? Not bad. What, uh, what did everyone do in guns this week, or in the last two weeks? I'm sure somebody... Had to have gotten something at Christmas that went bang, had a trigger on it, maybe set some things on fire. Well, I um, I got the unique uh, pleasure of putting in my paperwork to get permission from the state of New Jersey to buy another pistol, which I already have waiting in my FFL. So stay tuned. The next two or three months, I might be able to get it. Well, that sounds I like the ATF. I think the ATF's <laughs> turning around four and fours quicker than that. <laughs> yes, they are, sadly. Let's see. Well, I went, I went and visited friends and family down in Florida, and we were down there. We went to some gun ranges, had some good old <clears throat> good old fun at the gun ranges with the friends and family and whatnot. So, And then I sold some guns and converted lead into a brass and, or a converted steel into brass and lead, shall we say. Because there were some nice uh, deals on a, a 9mm ammunition. Over the Christmas holidays. Yeah, let's see. What did I do? Oh, about nothing. I got some sand AR mags in to color for Christmas. Uh, my son gave me those, so he must want colored AR mags or something. <laughs> so, let's see. I ordered some stuff. It's starting to roll in. Uh, I got an upper in today, so I can put together another AR because that's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's about it. Yeah, you, know? you can never have enough ARs. <laughs> or ammo. Mm -mm. That's right. So, uh, yeah, I got some uh, some Tavor parts in from uh, Manticore Arms. Little old Sven hooked me up. Uh, over, and they make some pretty awesome stuff for more than just the Tavor, the AUG, the AK, the AR, AR but... Uh, their Tavor stuff's pretty popular. Um, unfortunately, IWI didn't send me a freaking um, barrel locking or unlocking wrench. It's like just like a little bent over Allen key, but it's got a special head, a, a bit to unlock the barrel, so you can disassemble the bem the barrel and, and get into like the the triggers and guts and stuff. Don't have that, so I had to order it, like you know, fourteen dollars for just a little stinking tool. And then I'm kind of st stuck with a disassembled Tavor until I get that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put a rail on there. Uh, they just came out with a switchback uh, charging handle, which is pretty cool. It replaces the factory charging handle with one that uh, kind of like the, was it the SCAR? It folds down um, when not in use. And then when you fully charge it, it has a kind of detent that it, um, trips and flaps forward, so you don't have a charging handle permanently um, in the outward position. So that's kind of a cool mod that I'm doing. Sweet. Yeah, other than that, uh, I bought a, an ammo can. We, I think we talked about it on the show uh, probably in the last year or, or more, but it's a Safe by Liberty, um, and it's specifically kind of made for ammo. So I think it can hold like 150 pounds on each shelf. Um, it's a you know a barrel lock. Uh, you can put your ammo cans in there. Um, you step put your pistols in there on, on a rack if you wanted to. But I just kind of wanted a nice, safe, um, secure place I could keep ammo since I spend so much time reloading it and crafting it and hoarding it that 
it's nice to have it in its own organized sacred spot. So. Oh, so you're the reason I can't buy 22 ammo. Oh, don't, don't, no, 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 no. See, I've, <laughs> I've, I sit on a throne of 22 ammo just because I don't shoot it, and I've been saving it for years. I bought two boxes this year. Cabela's had on the 23rd, Winchester 555. Uh, you know, just kind of Christmas. But they came in a little like uh, keepsake wooden box. I only bought two. I could have bought four, but I was nice. I only grabbed two, and I gave them away to my buds. So, and you guys did not make that list, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, where's mine? It was mine. Yeah. It's it's in the mail. It's in the mail. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> right. Yeah. So oh, that, you, yeah. you got some. <laughs> oh, you got some, oh, Tony, oh, didn't you? Never mind. No, 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 not at all. No, thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you should you should have kept some of that because if you come down in May, you may need some of that to shoot my sub gun. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I do have uh I earlier I bought two 300 boxes of uh mini mags, the the chew them with the oh, uh, yeah. The alligator guy on there. So yeah. I've got a couple of those, and I'd, I'd rather keep that anyway because it shoots way better in, in like every 22 I have. <laughs> yeah. um, other than that, it looks like I'm going to be going to the NRA show this year, so that's good. I'm going to skip and shot show, um, but I'll be going to the NRA show, and then I think there might be a machine gun shoot a couple of weeks before that. Um, get more details, but I'm going to be doing some traveling in the uh, to the east and the northeast, so stay tuned for details, or not. I don't want you guys following me around, but <laughs> we're going to oh be selling God, some Patriot we're going to be selling some Patriot patch stuff at some machine gun shoots, so I'll, go, I'll give you guys the full info when I have it as well. Uh, that said, uh, good segue, our bandwidth sponsor for this episode is Patriot Patch Co. Check out our new uh, patches that we've added to the store. Um, we've got the um, reloading patch. Uh, I roll my own. Um, and we've got the uh, dangerous to go alone. Take this patch and the AK and AR uh, versions. I got them physically here to show on camera. So I roll my own. It's got a nice press on there. It's red. I'm kind of a Lee guy, so you Dylan guys can just you know hate all you want. Um, there's the I'm dan or it's dangerous to go alone. Take this patch. It's got some pretty nice detail in the 8-bit. Um, and then we got some cool ones coming up for the new year, so stay tuned. Uh, 2015 was a huge year for us, and I want to thank everybody that's listened to my podcast and, and gone over to the website and bought in a patch or bought in some shirts. Uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, stay tuned because we're going to be creating even more awesome stuff for next year. Uh, that said, guests are always welcome on the show. Um, some people have been emailing me wanting to come on. I really uh, am all about that and look forward to that. Uh, 2016, having more voices come on the show, uh, more different personalities, different perspectives, and uh, you know, people that's got more experience with different types of firearms and gear. Uh, if you're shopping for a, um, a holster, Kydex, outside the waistband or inside the waistband, check out Bravo Concealment. Uh, get 10% off your next order using RTT Combo 10. That's RTT Combo 10 to get 10% on your next order. And lastly, another big thank you to all the listeners, reviewers, and companies that contributed to make the Gun and Gear Review podcast big this year. Um, all the, the companies and the guys that have sent me material uh, to, to review. Um, just right off the top of my head, the uh, target hit indicator systems. Uh, I haven't done a review of it yet. That probably won't be until 2016, but I've done a lot of experimenting with that. I'm looking forward to that review. Um, you know, there's uh, just the, what was it, the W, uh, sorry, I'm having a brain fart, that uh, AR that I had from WGM Tactical. Um, the big thank you to them for sending me a uh, AR to review. Um, yeah, so everyone, thank you so much. I look forward to having another great year. That's pretty much all the sappy stuff out of the way. Let's get right into some new products. Right off the bat, um, we got the Desert Eagle, also uh, kind of coined a Deagle for those too, too lazy to pronounce all them syllables. 
Uh, they're coming out with a lightweight version from uh, Magnum Research. And we happen to be lucky enough, one of our very own co-hosts owns a Desert Eagle and has a lot of experience with that manly, manly gun. So speak up. What do you think? It looks interesting. Now, I've been all over their website. I can't see where these guns are listed for sale on their website yet, so maybe I'm guessing this is like a uh, um, the firearm blog got an early uh, awareness of this uh, gun. But basically, it looks like what they're doing is they're just shortening the barrel to take out weight. And you figure it wouldn't take off a whole lot of weight shortening the barrel, but on a Desert Eagle, which is a huge gun, it goes from uh, 4 pounds, 8.4 ounces, down to 3 pounds, 2 ounces. So you're shaving over a pound and a half off this hand cannon. So it's definitely going to make it lighter. And if you're watching the video instead of the audio podcast, I'm holding up my Desert Eagle. So I'm guessing what they do is they chop it down to probably maybe an inch or two off the barrel, which that will definitely lighten this gun. And I don't know if it's going to make it more controllable or more controllable or more controllable or easier to shoot because the 50 Action Express is a honking round. And when I shoot this gun with the 50 AE, which is what it's chambered in, it, this thing kicks like a son of a gun. And I, I'm not sure if the reduction in weight is going to make it easier to shoot or not I mean I'm uh, I'm not really sure I'm kind of you know uh, up open on that now they did say in the article that it's supposed to be ported so if it's ported that should help out with some of the recoil but again I'm not really you know convinced either way I, I just have to see it and shoot it before I figure it out but there, it looks like they're the, the grip is going to be the same because it ships with the, uh, the same magazine that the current Desert Eagle ships with, which is a seven-round uh, Magnum Research brand magazine because, you know, these are so popular that only Magnum Research makes these mags, and they go for 50 bucks uh, if you need to buy extras because that's what I paid for mine. <laughs> and they're looking to have a retail price of 20, 2054 a little over almost 2100 bucks by the time you throw taxes on there and you look at the regular desert eagle it's going to be 1500 bucks so i think you got um, that uh twisted around a little bit mm -hmm. the isn't it the regular one mm -hmm. no, the regular one's coming? like 1500 bucks cuz okay. the 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 desert the the tiger stripe desert eagles go for 1800 1900 bucks because what it says right here, the weight savings are largely due to the use of an aluminum frame. This gun ships with a seven-round mag and has a retail price of $2,054. Um, yeah, and that's for the 50 AE one. Yeah. And then it looks like they're also making a lightweight 357 one. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. probably going to do 357 and, and 44 Magnum, but part of the article says Magnum Research has an integral muzzle brake, which would be good. Ho grips and a nine round magazine out the package. Suggested retail price is 1790. The basic Black Desert Eagle in the original configuration lists for 1572. So it almost seems like it's going to be a lighter gun, but they're going to change the the materials it's made out of and raise the price a little bit. So. I mean, switching from from steel to aluminum, mm -hmm. it's still a honk and chunk of aluminum. I mean, it's oh yeah, it's it's way, gonna be much stronger <laughs> than what you might be familiar with. With oh, you know, my my ARs receivers are made out of aluminum, and you know, I don't want to shoot 50 AE out of that. But it's I'm I'm pretty sure that the tolerances and the thickness of the walls of that metal are going to be plenty well enough to handle the uh, the pressures involved. And if you figure every time I take this to the range, you put a couple rounds down range, and I don't care where I'm at, indoor, outdoor, wherever, people just stop shooting and they go kind of looking at me going, what in the devil is that guy shooting? And it's it's just a really, really fun gun to shoot. So if you're interested in getting a Desert Eagle, I'd look at it. And I'd look at either that or the full-size one, or even the full-size ones that have the, uh, the muzzle brake at the end of the barrel. So it would be like this one, but you'd have a muzzle brake that extends probably about that far out. I mean, it's it's a fun gun to shoot, but it's not a gun to shoot just for beginners or novices. And I would highly recommend you you start off on 357 Magnum, move up to 44 Magnum, move up to bigger calibers, and 
graduate yourself to the Desert Eagle because the 50 AE is like the, the Smith 500. It is a honking round to shoot. I've shot mine in pistol matches, and when I start shooting, normally by the end of the by the end of my round, everybody is probably 25, 30 yards back, and it's just me and a range safety officer at the line because they realize that it is a loud. It's a hand howitzer, basically. Uh, I've had a friend of mine shoot a Smith 500 at the same match, and at the end of the match, he actually cut his hand because of the recoil of that uh, the the pistol. So, I mean, it's not definitely not a first time gun or a gun for a novice, but it is a fun gun to shoot. How many rounds have you put through it? Uh, let's see. There's 20 rounds to a box. So I probably put about ten boxes through it, and you figure about a buck and a half to two bucks around. I don't shoot it that often, but when I do shoot it, it's fun as all get out to shoot. And I do save my brass because eventually I'm gonna start reloading, and I'm gonna see if that's one of the cartridges or see what it would take to reload that cartridge. But yeah, it's a honker to shoot. It's a fun gun to shoot. Yeah, it is. I've shot the 44 and a 357 Magnum. <clears throat> and you're not going to fire a lot of rounds through the 50 AE at all. You probably will fire more 357 Magnum or 44. Back in the day, I think they still might do it. That they'd sell all the components that you can switch between the whole three rounds. With with this gun know right if here, they'll do that. Uh, they they sell. They actually have a kit on their website for the 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 standard black edition. But to yeah. go from 50 to 44 Magnum, all you really have to do is change the barrel. Same, it's the same, and if you look, this thing has a bolt in it that looks almost like the bloody bolt on an AR-15. This is gas-operated. So to go to, to 44 Magnum, my belief is all you have to do is change the barrel out, and the barrel actually, unlike most guns that you see, your Glocks, your Smith & Wessons and whatnot, the barrel it rotates. This one, the barrel is fixed. The barrel does not move as the gun actuates. The slide moves. The barrel stands still. To remove the barrel, ow, you don't uh, just push that button, flip that switch down, barrel comes off the front, slide goes out the back. And it's that easy to change out the barrel. And when you do it, you're not supposed to actually pinch your uh, the web of your hand. But the really interesting thing about it is to go to the 30, the 357 Magnum, that's when you actually have to change the barrel and you actually have to change the uh, the piston inside of it. To, or not the piston, but the the uh, bolt. Yeah, bolt. the bolt. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The the little bolt face. It's You're a welcome. totally different bolt for the two. But for some reason, I guess when they designed the 50 AE and the 44 Magnum, it's the same thing. And the interesting thing here is, is if you're seeing the the actual video of this, let me see if I can get this out of the way. This is actually the a piston, so it's a gas operated pistol. It's one of the few gas operated pistols out there, and it's dirty because I haven't cleaned it. But the really neat thing about this. That's the, a double recoil spring system. So there's actually four springs. There's a, a, a an outside spring and an inside spring on these two rods, and that's that's what returns the uh, the slide home. <laughs> it is a wicked gun wow. to shoot, and it's very fun. Now I will highly recommend if you see like if I'm at the range, people come up to me and they want to shoot my gun, I'll let them shoot it. As somebody who owns it and buys ammunition for it, and knows and you know the price of this thing, if you do it, I recommend maybe you give them a couple bucks per round for the ammunition to kind of offset their costs. But it is a hoot to shoot, and if you're looking to get into it, do it. You won't be disappointed. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the guys I uh, spoke to last month said he has one and he wants to bring it to uh, the next second is for everyone. And he said, but I'm not letting anyone shoot it unless they pay me for the ammo because this thing is expensive. <laughs> oh, it is. The, and the only thing I'd be cautious of too is it, it irks me when I see videos on YouTube, you know, oh, I gave the gun to my daughter or my, my girlfriend. I let her shoot the gun or I let her shoot a, a 500 Smith and look at her. It, it knocked her in the head and it knocked her out. Those people irk the crap out of me. I want to smack them. Don't do that. That's irresponsible and stupid. Sorry. I'm going to get off my high horse now. But <laughs> It's not a high horse. It's a total safety issue. Absolutely. It's a safety issue. Are you going to have someone shoot something too powerful for them, not tell them about exactly. it? Exactly. And then have knocked on their tuckers. And don't get upset with me if 
you do shoot my gun and I only load it with one round, that's just so in case it recoils and it's too much for you to shoot, it won't you won't have a danger of a double discharge or a, a incident an accidental double shooting. Because this thing will recoil and it's the only gun I've ever seen that actually comes with a piece of paper that says, here's how you shoot it, here's how you hold it, here's how you stand, put your hands like this, make sure you lock your wrists, make sure you, you want to, uh, basically what they're trying to do is tell you to absorb the recoil back into your shoulders instead of at the wrists. But it's a fun gun to shoot. <laughs> Absolutely recommend shooting it. Awesome. It's one, it's one of those guns that should be on your bucket list if it's not. <laughs> And then uh, would TJ put a note saying that uh, now the the weight would be 50 ounces, uh, which is the max weight for a handgun in New York. It might be New York legal. Yeah. Well, it's only got a seven round magazine. Yeah, so it makes that New York limit. <laughs> well, but you can't put one in the chamber, eject yeah. the mag, and put another one in the mag. So you could technically have eight. But I don't know if that's I don't know what New York laws are. I don't go to New York. Um, yeah. Oh, let me clue you in. New York laws are ridiculous. And and if TJ's it's putting ridiculous. notes in, how come he's not on the show? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Because he's, he's, he's just... uh... <laughs> No, he's that's mine. okay. <laughs> that's all right. So the uh, the next product we got is from Fab Defense, and this is a new uh, AR-15 magazine called the Ultimag Smart Load. Uh, and what this does is basically uh, it's got a pull string at the bottom that you pull so you can rapidly uh, insert rounds, just let them fall all the way to the bottom. So it kind of, instead of you know each round pushing down the follower more and more and more, you pull that string and it kind of pulls the floor plate down, which allows you to feed rounds into it much faster than before. Have you guys uh, gotten to take a look at it? I'm 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 trying to figure out you know I've I've known about like the pull string method for years on magazines you just drill a little hole and follow <laughs> I'm waiting for Tony mm -hmm. to start laughing but <laughs> mm -hmm. and but with this type of deal the problem is is you got to pull it with one hand hold the magazine so who the hell is going to load your put the rounds in the magazine for you uh uh, no, actually, you pull it and it stays out. So you load. The, I think you load them and then you pull it again and the spring goes up. Oh, so it actually yeah. will stay out. It looks like yeah. it. But it looks like that. If you look at the video, it looks like one of those like a wind-up toy. You get your kid, you pull it, you pull it, you pull it. When you're done, it kind of like zips back into the in the bottom of the magazine. Okay, yeah. well that that that's better. I I like that better. But I, I've never had trouble loading magazines. It's thirty bucks. <laughs> it's thirty five dollars. Yeah, thirty five dollars. Yeah. I can buy three Magpul P Mags for that price. <laughs> oh no, you, you know can I only can't. buy That's two because right. they're the windowed. <laughs> it's got a window. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, I, I've listened whatever. to people talk about this, and they tried to put lipstick on this pig by saying <laughs> that. Um, well, it might be for people with weak hand strength that has trouble loading AR fifteen mags. And I'm sorry. It may be true. Hey, there may be people out there because I have I had a I had a student with really weak hand strength and, and she couldn't do a lot of things. But one of the easiest things to do is load an AR fifteen mag up until the last couple of rounds at least. And for the extra money you would spend on this you could just get over it. <laughs> yeah, you can just work on it. Yeah, a blue You can buy an Ablula and just be gone, and the Ablula cost will not be as much as a bunch of these. That's the thing is, if they were twenty five bucks, you might buy one just to try it out. Yeah, I mean, but the I, price is high enough that kind of has that cutoff point, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, I have one of the Kamenga megs or whatever, the ones that like slide apart and hold the spring down. You know, and I bought it just to try that, you know, and it was like 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because, I mean, there is a price that everybody, the curiosity, you, you spend X amount of dollars just to check something out. 
Right. But it's $35.70, plus you got to throw in shipping for whatever they charge you. Because yeah. uh, cause it's Mako, right? Mako Group, yeah. Yeah. Fab, Defense, all the same thing. They make what looks like quality stuff. Some of it's kind of gadgety, but the price tag is always high on everything they make. It just, no, is my answer. Not for me. But someone, again, might have an issue and want to do it, and that's great because the product is out there. I think products like this are great because if even this doesn't work for you, it might lead to someone else developing something like this that would work. So I don't bash it for being out there. I just say this one's not for me. Something like skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> That's a visual I did not need. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I can do to help. <laughs> Chop the velvet, baby. Yeah, and the okay. uh, the video the video that they used to promote it, it's it's really funny because I mean you see those really bad like ass so you've seen on TV infomercials where it shows like a somebody doing like an ordinary task and they like fail and it's kind of like exaggerated like have you ever tried you know you know uh, putting popcorn in a bowl and popcorn was like spilling everywhere and it's like oh my gosh and, and it's like you need this giant for this ridiculous product to help you complete this menial yeah. task that that's only you, because I haven't heard of bag popcorn it's, right so it's, it, it, it's kind of along the same things they're using the same model like throughout the time periods you know in the uh, the American Revolutionary War trying to stuff a musket and he's getting shot at by volleys of uh, red, uh, red coats and he's in the uh, uh, wild west and an Indian shooting at him and he's still trying to uh, load a uh, a muzzle loading rifle, and then you know, kind of fast forwards to hunting, and he's trying to reload his bolt action rifle, and he gets bit on the crotch by a yeah. badly taxidermied coyote. Um, yeah. So it is it is quite comical. I mean, he's he's trying to load his M1 Garand while there's a tank coming at him, and the clip just flies right out. Um, and yeah, I did say clip that was app applicable app applicable at the time, but the did very end it shows him. <laughs> Yeah, side by side, he's loading a magazine at the shooting bench with his, next to his buddy, and his buddy smokes him because he's got this Ultimag, and he's, you know, like, uh, bullets are jumping out. He's not putting them in the feed lips correctly. He's, you know, kind of like sucking on his thumb like he, he jammed his thumb into the magazine. Just kind of overly clumsy to sell the product, and I know they were kind of doing it in, like, a tongue-in-cheek way, but it is really ridiculous. I mean, if... Magazines have been around for how long, and they haven't really need this specific niche to all of a sudden it, like it's it's solving a problem that never really existed. Like load the magazine, do it right. Like if you're under duress, then I guess you just never trained to load a magazine under pressure. That's not like no. the product's fault. That's that's your fault. You no, know, if you're under duress and you're trying to load a magazine, it means you didn't load enough magazines to begin with. Exactly. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm gonna go on. Oh, something. let me explain something to you. Oh, I was I was. I gonna know say. in Jersey you're limited to five magazines per household. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, if you duct tape them together so they're about is it this only one? wide, you're fine. Yeah. I'm sorry. If this um, magazine, this a style, <laughs> this style magazine, you know, like we said, AR mags are super easy to load. But if this were like a 19-round pistol mag, like a Glock mag, which sucks to load, <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, then I could see this might be a little better. You know, I'm thinking on an AR mag, no, but on some pistol mags, yeah, that would be a big help. Like a 32-round Glock mag? Oh, oh heck yeah. Yes. Heck <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, all you people being jerks now with your 32 and 19 round match because you know I live in jerks. That's just rude. It's like making fun of a kid with a handicap. It's not what you do. You just don't do that in public. Unless you but, <laughs> my, I trip them. Um, the funny thing about this video was, you know, to me, being a history buff, that they're using muzzle loaders and little bighorn. Uh, wrong. Mm -hmm. so, 
they didn't use muzzle loaders and little big horn, at least not the cavalry. Uh, it was really corny. You guys are right. The commercial, because I don't even think they can take this thing seriously at thirty-five dollars and change. For reals, though, I'm sorry, but how much did they put into this? They think what people are gonna buy tons of these? It's gonna be the next big thing. Sorry, but what from Mako Group has ever been the next big thing? I don't know. <laughs> There's a couple cool earlier. accessories that come out of Israel. The recovery. I think the recovery, I think, is that what it's called? The recover, uh, the pistol grip thing that you put on 1911s to give them a uh, Picatinny rail? I think that's oh, what okay. Called. Yeah, Those I know what you're called. talking about. Yeah, they made it now for the uh, Beretta also, if you got one of the old mm. school M9 Berettas. Oh, here's another idea. Just take your Beretta and sell it and buy a one with a pistol grip on it or the uh, pick rail on it. Yeah, real slick coming from a place that you can actually go in the store and buy a gun the same day. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't I mean, mean it's to. funny because people don't understand what you have to contend with in states like this. It's like, yeah, it makes a great idea if I lived in America, but I live here. I sell my gun. It'll be six months before they approve me to buy another one. I hate this place, but I'm staying here and trying to make a difference. There you go. Behind enemy lines. Yep. Yep. So, yep, it's it's there. Um, you know, if if they brought this into a drum, um, that also would be something interesting. If it kind of instead of having a, uh, you know, like a latch, uh, a ratcheting system, if that kind of unwound the drum as you loaded it. But I don't know if it'd be possible with the way that the rounds need to coil inside the drum. But well, actually, uh, most drums you just take the back off, put the just stack the rounds up in there, then put the back on, then twist them back together. Or, then twist the uh, spring tight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tony's all like, well, why are we talking about musical instruments all of a sudden? <laughs> I'm what? <laughs> why are we talking about musical instruments all of a sudden? What's, what's with the drums? <laughs> oh, wow. Here, here's a bottom line. You load about 40 or 50 uh, AR-15 magazines, you'll have the, the strength you need to be able to load a magazine. Yeah. And if that don't work, yeah. get yourself in a pool of speed loader. Then you can use that pool of speed loader on every magazine you got for an AR-15. Yep. There you go. All right. So covering that. Next up, Ruger. Um, they've got a new American rifle out in uh, two Magnum calibers. So people that have been clamoring for a lightweight and somewhat inexpensive Magnum caliber, um, you know, and looking at the alternatives being a Tika T3 Lite. Um, or maybe a Savage Axis. I don't know if they make the Axises in Magnum Calibers, but maybe like a trophy. Um, now the Ruger American rifle is available in Magnum Calibers, so 300 Win Mag and 7mm Rem Mag. So they both are threaded, uh, 5 eighths by 24, if you wanted to put a muzzle brake on there, which is something I always look forward to doing on a Magnum Caliber because it takes a lot of that uh, that recoil out, makes it feel much more like a a th like a 308 almost. Um, and then if you wanted, if you had like an awesome suppressor that could handle the the pressures involved, that would up the cool factor a, a lot and the utility. 24 inch barrel, uh, seven and a half pounds each. Both of them MSRP for six hundred ninety nine dollars. The twist rates, the 300 one mag is a one in ten, and the seven rem mag is a one in nine and a half inch uh, twist rate. So, uh, black, composite, black composite stock, it does look like these are box magazine fed. It does have a scope rail pre-installed from the factory with a, uh, a matte stainless barrel. You guys a, a big fan of the uh, Americans? Well, I've got a Ruger uh, American and 22 long rifle, and it's a really nice gun to shoot, especially with the uh, suppressor on the end of it. It's really, really fun to shoot. Um, I'm not sure how they scale them up into or scale that down in, from this, because I think they came up with the, the full size rifles and they made the 22 after that. Yeah, they did but, the full size and the 22, 22 Magnum, and yeah. then they went back up and did the Predators series, the Predator series. Um, Savage does have uh, theirs uh, is a Model 11 or 
11 slash 111 and 300 Win Mag and 7 Miller uh, 7 Remington Magnum. And they're about uh, MSRP is like 768. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely thinking a gun like that would need a Silencer Co. Big Bore Harvester on the end of it, <laughs> or something of that nature. Yeah, the nice thing about these are is they come in at a good price. I mean, mm -hmm. for what they are, I mean, if you want a Magnum hunting rifle and one pre-threaded, uh, it looks mm -hmm. like both of them have a three-round capacity magazine. So, you know, pretty much Which probably... Is very legal. apropos, because I don't know if you want to shoot more than three rounds out of that at one time. Maybe with a break or a suppressor, but <laughs> I don't know. Seven and a half pounds is still lightweight when you send the nose suckers down range. Yeah, but you know, for a hunting rifle, yeah, it's mm -hmm. a great idea. I mean, do you really want to be lugging a big old honking fifteen-pound gun while you're hunting in the woods or whatnot? No. Hey, and, and I live in Jersey. Want... <laughs> I'll just hit it with a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that is a way more efficient and effective way to hunt. As yeah. long as your automobile insurance will cover the damage. They said or you have a car that wouldn't really be affected by the damage. Well, I'm trying to total mine out anyway. But they said in Jersey, 50,000 deer hit a year. So, like, who needs a hunting rifle? I'll just drive up and down the parkway until I get one. <laughs> um, well, this, you know, the I weird like, part I is like I actually... Mercy. Go ahead. I was going to say, in Florida, I hit a deer with my truck. I was... I was hitting the brakes, blowing the horn, flish, flack, uh, flashing my high beams at the stupid thing. It just stood right in the middle of the road and did not move. If it wasn't for the fact that there was either a choice of a ditch or the deer, I, I would have tried to run off the road, so I didn't hit the stupid thing. But No, I did get you know. Yeah. No, actually, I'll leave a parking lot to chase a deer down and run them over um, because it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. I don't do that. It's one of the things I do in my head. Um, the Ruger American Rifle, I like the whole concept of it. Ruger has actually changed up and become, if not innovative, kind of a game changer. How? A lot of people were doing introductory rifles. They were, That's what the price range were in the beginning of Ruger uh, American Series. And it was the entry level. I mean, even uh, what's the, oh, Weatherby has an entry level rifle. Remington has an entry level rifle. Savage had the Axis come out. All of them came out, Ruger copied the Savage, but also, I mean, really, almost every, you could barely tell them apart when they first came out. But what Ruger did was put their adjustable trigger in. And all of a sudden, they stepped up the game. Everyone else had to step up their game on that entry level. And that's what Ruger has done. And they've run with this American rifle by um, making it the basis of everything they put out that's a bolt action new. I mean, they have that, what, 77 series? But they have these, all these polymer rifles they came out with, and they're working them to death. Even the new uh, Ruger American, I mean, the Ruger Precision Rifle is built on an American rifle action, a Ruger American action. So I think these are great. Um, if you want to get into this, I think it's one of the lower price points you can do in getting into a Magnum hunting rifle. Um, I think their regular rifles is, is pretty much a really good starting point, again, because of the trigger and because of how accurate it is. But just realize what you have, because I was looking up a lot of different things on the Ruger American, and people were trying to make 1,000-yard rifles out of Ruger American. It's a hunting rifle. It is not a 1,000-yard precision rifle. Yeah, I put this out to everybody in the gun industry. I put this out in everything in the gun industry. People try to make things that aren't. They try to turn some guns into things they aren't. And I think that was one of the things that happened with the Ruger American. It was accurate enough as a hunting rifle that people tried to turn it into something that wasn't. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a lightweight rifle that you're capable of hiking with, and uh, it, it shaves all the unnecessary ounces of a, a bench rifle or something that's supposed to kind of shoot as well on the bench as it does in the field. Um, that's where you've seen a lot of manufacturers, uh, Kimber with the Ascent and the Adirondack, uh, even the Remington 700 Mountain Series. A lot of companies have a bolt-action rifle specifically lightened enough using composites, um, a, a very aggressively tapered barrel. You know, they don't mean for you to take, you know, 10 shots in a row and not have that barrel 
hot to the touch. I mean, they're meant for you climbed up the hill, you took your one shot, you got your animal, and you walked down the or you hiked down the hill, and you didn't like, you know, bust your butt in the process. <clears throat> so I think it's really nice to see this come out. I like I like the idea of the American line expanding. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were specifically looking for a 300 win mag or a 7 rem mag, and now they have another alternate versus going to a higher priced um, like Saco or uh, Kimber. Um, I think you okay. you still you still have the Tika T3 available to you, but um, and those are from what I've seen and handled and, and heard, those are some pretty phenomenal rifles on their own as well. Yeah, and also Ruger makes their Hawkeye series in, of course, 300 Win Mag and 7 Rim Mag also. Yeah. But the MSRP is almost $1,000. Yep. I mean, this this gives you the opportunity to add a quality optic to your rifle and be ready to hunt for under $1,000 um, without cheaping out so much that it's going to be a not not really like a higher percentage of being a lemon of a gun, but kind of more of a well, it'll it'll get me by this this year and next year I'll upgrade to something else. Like it's it should just like the other American rifles be something that you can depend on every year uh, and not feel the need to have to upgrade to something more robust uh, next year. Yeah, I th I think one of the things we as gun people do. Because they're gun people, then there's hunters, then there's shooters. I mean, there's, there's different levels of this. Um, I was reading up on various Remington, Amer uh, Ruger American, excuse me, and um, one of the things I've read on a lot of the places was you can't accessorize these. They don't have a lot of aftermarket. Well, there's some people that don't look for aftermarket. They buy their rifle, put a scope on it, and shoot it as is. Not everybody does that. Um, everybody's not you in the gun world. We all have that gun thing in common, but that might be where it stops. Some people will buy it, put glass on it, and shoot this thing twice a year. You know what I mean? They zero it, and then they go out hunting, they get whatever they shoot, and they come back, and that's it. Um, everybody's not looking to buy, you know, a Remington 700 and drop another 1000 or $1,500 in it to make it like some precision shooting thing. I'm just saying, sometimes we get caught up in what we do and think everyone else does the same thing. Not true. Yep. And uh, from personal experience, the Ruger American like rail that they put on there, it's uh, it's kind of off. If you have a one-piece scope mount, you're going to have a bad time because the uh, the slots don't exactly line up because they're kind of separated into the rear half slots and the front half. In the middle, there's a unslotted portion of scope or metal that's got the Ruger emblem kind of engraved in it. And for branding, yeah, I get it. And you don't, nobody really utilizes the center section of slots, but a couple times I've noticed people come in to a, a gun shop or and they're like, well, my one-piece ba base doesn't fit on this rail anymore. With this rail because of the lines or the slots don't line up like Picatinny is because it's you know even all the way down. So I would probably just give you guys a preface and that you are going to need a two piece uh, ring system to mount your optic on here. But you would have found that out eventually. <laughs> and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was the particular ones. I, I can't remember what. If it was a, a one-piece loophole base, or whether they were taking, you know, one, like one of those Nikon uh, 223 bases designed for the AR and trying to put it on their bolt action, I'm not not sure what the case was, but just a little friendly tidbit to throw out there. I mean, I found that out with my Remington 700. I put a regular uh, pick rail across the top of it to mount my scope, and the darn thing, the brass kept hitting the rail when I. Uh, Try to eject it, so I had to put that the the special little one with the cut out on there, so the brass will eject properly. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just take a Dremel to that man. You could have done that yourself. I was gonna say a mill, but <laughs> I guess. <laughs> wow. So so again, again, power tools don't go good together. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh. Um. Yep. So the next product that we're gonna talk about real quick is a uh, a new scope series from Sig. 
uh, six hour the Tango Four is what they call it, and it's available in a couple different magnifications um, and several different reticles. There's a Milrad reticle, and there's also a uh, an MOA reticle, but it also has a 300 blackout reticle, which I was kind of browsing for, and that's how I came across it. So uh, the blackout is a horseshoe dot reticle. So it's almost it's like a horseshoe design uh, with dots, but it's also got some sub tension on there too. Uh, so it's available in uh, one to four by twenty four, as well as three to twelve by twenty forty two. Sorry, and then four to sixteen by forty four and six to twenty four by fifty. I looked up the one to four on uh, Optics Planet. And they had it for five hundred ninety nine dollars ninety nine cents, um, with a MSRP listed of seven hundred and forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Um, so that's not a bad price for a you know an AR or or tactical low magnification scope. Um, so it, it was kind of developed, of course, to be high quality using um, some pretty good materials. If you guys want to take a look at the website sigoptics.com and then look for the Tango 4 series. Um, <clears throat> so the the one to four. Wait, no. The uh, some of these come. It's a first focal plane design, meaning that when you zoom in, your reticle actually enlarges and contracts with the magnification, so that your subtension stay true at all ranges instead of just second focal plane would be okay. I've got to zoom all the way into 12. And uh, in order for my subtensions to be correct, um, so that's kind of a really nice system that a lot of scope companies are leaning towards, or at least releasing first focal plane models, Vortex, Night Force, and the like. Um, I think I've even seen some loopholes that were first focal plane. Yeah, it looks like all the all four of the models are first focal plane. Okay. I just ran through them, so. Cool. Uh, so yeah, it's got a a lockdown zero system, so lockable turrets and a motion-activated illumination system that they call the MOTAC. And then uh, it includes one free SIG ballistic turret, which is a custom laser elevation dial calibrated to your unique ballistics and environmental conditions, meaning that you'd give them your, your uh, kind of all your ballistic data, your velocity, your uh, ballistic coefficient, the, the projectile that you're using, as well as your environment. You usually like the average ambient temperature and your uh, your elevation as well. That's pretty cool. But yeah. the uh, the one to four would be a, an alternative to like a, the Vortex one to four PSTs, which I've got one of those. I love those. Uh, Loophole's got some one to fours for their AR optics line. And then of course you've got the much cheaper route with the uh, the Nikons, um, the P223 as well as, I think, some Bushnell AR optics. <clears throat> so, have you guys... I don't know if I've, I've seen any SIG optics in any kind of stores yet, so I'd, I'd love to yeah. play with them. But I, th I think, I think, I think they're ahead. just coming out with them is kind of what I, I was understanding. Uh, I was looking at these, and this feature is kind of cool. They have what they call MOTAC, which is Motion Activated Illumination which powers it up when it senses motion, the illumination, of course, and then powers it down when it doesn't. So, you know, hopefully that doesn't break on you. Uh, but they're etched reticles, so it's not like you need the lit reticle anyway. So that's kind of cool. Supposedly they're waterproof to a meter, uh, so when you drop it in your mud puddle or decide to go swimming with it, uh, you kind of went over everything else. Uh, I actually this one to four looks pretty interesting. I'd, you know, it'd be nice to see one in a store to look through, compare it to like the vortex like Brian has. So, I've been kind of looking for a one to four, one to six. Uh, the price isn't terrible for what it is. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of expected it to be a lot more, being that it is a SIG optics product, and some like the Bravo um, Red Dot holographic sites, you know, those are 
already priced out of my price range, but I was just kind of expecting these to go the same way, and I was surprised that, oh, well, that's, you know, almost real close to uh, some Vortex. I mean, depending on where you get it. Yeah, that's kind of what I saw when he, you posted it in the show notes. I'm like, 600 bucks. I'm like, oh, that's not as bad as I expected it to be. I mean, MSRP is, what, seven forty nine ninety nine. so that's a pretty yeah. good retail. I guess I'm not familiar with SIG, but uh, you know what kind of warranty they have with these things? Because I haven't seen anywhere where they're talking about their warranty. That's a good question. Because, again, I'm not familiar with SIG Glass, with <clears throat> SIG Optics. You know, I know, I know Vortex has a really good warranty, you know, when you when you look down at the specs, the last two items they have an infinite guarantee, meaning that they're guaranteed forever, unlimited lifetime guarantee, uh, fully transferable, no warranty card required, no receipt needed, no time limit applies, and no charges. Um, and then there's also a five-year warranty to cover any defects in the materials, workmanship, um, in the electronic and tritium components of illuminated sites. Pistol sights, electronic sights, uh, rifle scopes, flashlights, lasers, binoculars, all their like electro optics line is covered under the five year warranty. Um, okay, so that's on Optics Planet then, right? No, that's that's off of SIG's website. So that's uh that's a, a limited five year warranty for electric component. Um and, you know, that's going to be from, like I said, uh, defects in materials and workmanship. But it's still got that infinite, unlimited lifetime guarantee. Um, so you should be covered, just like, you know, Vortex has got that unlimited no BS uh, guarantee. Right. Uh, the loophole guarantee, That's that's been around for a while. Yeah. Because I know, My I know question Vortex was... and loophole have got some awesome guarantees with their stuff. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. I'm I'm comparing it to Vortex because that's what I've been, you know, because of the value uh, to a Vortex product. I know Loophole, you, you're paying for the name somewhat. Um, they're a little more expensive. And I'm looking at the same price range with their, uh, not Strike Eagle, what's the one, P, uh, the Viper. I'm PST. looking at the Viper and I'm like, yeah, the PST, and I'm like, this, um, this SIG actually has more options. I like the fact that it will turn off the uh, the red dot, or, or you know the uh, it will turn it off if you're not moving the rifle around. So that's pretty cool. And uh, also, its first focal plane, which beats out the Vortex uh, PST, uh, because that's second focal plane still correct. Second focal plane, right, right? They, uh, I'm not sure if they did an FFP on the the one to four. I do know that there's quite a lot of First focal plane and vortex scope, so I think they may have that covered. However, it does dramatically increase the price, um, you know, upwards to yeah. over 100 bucks just between first and second focal plane. Yeah, so I was looking it up, and I'm thinking uh, this might be a deal. I forget who Sig went into business with because before Sig, uh, Sig only had that one red dot, and I've heard a lot of iffy stuff about that one red that they used to have and put on everything. It kind of looked like the Bushnell TRS-25, I think. Uh, and uh, now it seems like they stepped up their game. Uh, SIG is doing a lot of good stuff. They started doing the suppressor. They started doing the glass. And then they started doing ammo. So SIG is kind of spreading their wings, you know? Yep. Oh, well, they just went out and they bought the... the the knowledge from people who left other companies and said, come work for us, we'll give you a lot of money and make some really cool stuff for us. That's, and they're making cool stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not I arguing they're that. Making, I think it's, they're making good stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's nothing oh, yeah, wrong with, with poaching smart. talent. Nothing wrong at all. I think, it's, I think it's smart what they're doing, and they're standing behind it with the warranty because I was wondering about that, too. So I was checking a bunch of stuff from Vortex out. Um... Yeah, I'm looking on the website, and the uh, the the one to four is a first focal plane. From Vortex? For who? Sig? No, from Sig. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We know. First focal we know. plane. Oh yeah, yeah. Now I was talking about the Vortex PST. Was that first focal plane? And it's not. Yeah, the I know my two and a half to ten is 
Uh, there, there's two versions of it with and first second focal plane and first focal plane. Um, so I, I wasn't sure if that's reached the, the one to six and the one to four yet. Yeah, it's not on the one to six because that's what I was looking at <clears throat> to purchase just for that extra two. <laughs> because I have no idea how far I'm going to be. I might change ranges. Right now my range only goes to 200 yards, and I've been shooting 100 yards with the iron sights. But I want to yeah. step it up. So there is the, the Tango 6 line, um, which offers some different magnification ranges um, from SIG. So there is a 1 to 6 by 24. There's a 2 to 12 by 40, a 3 to 18 by 44. And for the guys that really want to take long pokes, there's a 5 to 30 by 56. Um, wow. That, that's going to be like U.S. optics, Huskman, scope pricing range, I, I'm sure of it, um, but there's some people that just have that need for that tool, So, and those are the kind of people that I like to be friends with. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I just found their one to six. Um, wow. Well, that's a price leap. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it's over $1,200. So I think, I don't know if they, the coatings are any different. Um, I know that I'm seeing some new features on the Tango 6s, like the Hellfire electronic illuminated reticle system using fiber optics, um, HDX optics, uh, low dispersion glass. Still got the MoTeC on there and the Lockdown Zero system. Um, I just think it's be built a little bit beefier with a couple of extra features included. I'll be sure so if these if I ever see any SIG optics, you know, probably gonna be like right before the Simmons because usually when like I go into a store, they've got them organized in alphabetical order for some weird reason. So the Vortex are always at the bottom, um, <clears throat> kind of right before Zeiss. <laughs> so I'll be sure to check these out if I happen to see them. Pretty interesting stuff coming out of SIG. I haven't seen any SIG optics in my local gun shops, so they must not have a big dealer circle yet. Mm -hmm. um, so moving on from that, we do have uh, one review this week from uh, Chad. So what did, what did you bring to uh, talk about this time? Oh, I have the Kinetic Development Group Sidelock Picatinny Riser, and I'll. S kind of hold it up here for people watching if that helps. Uh, this thing is actually pretty sweet. I mean, I must admit, it, you know, it it's a riser, but it's got their nifty little attachment way. So basically, all you have to do is stick it on the rail. and see if you can see that. And then, oh, I was playing with it, so I gotta make sure this little pieces in. You stick it on the rail and it pops on. And then to release it, you just kind of roll it off at a 45 degree angle. Snaps on. So, that's super cool. I... So, they came out with this. Uh, I don't know. I've had it for a while. Took it on, took it off. I can't tell you how many times this thing's been on and off of this thing, this AR and had zero point of impact shift, which is always good, uh, which I think is how it's designed to do. Uh, this nifty little cam lock is super cool. You probably can't see it, but it's got this little teeny button in here. And what it does is, is you can't push it in and take it on and off without pushing this little safety lever in, which kind of, which is a big help. Uh, you can actually mount this either direction, forwards, backwards, depending on how you want to take it on and off. So that's kind of nice. Uh, super easy to use. Uh, this little U-shaped cutout protects it so you can still hold the button down. Uh, so that's pretty much how you remove and install it. Uh, like I said, I put it a lot of rounds through this, 
kept I just can't tell you how many people I showed this thing to. Took it off, put it on. They're like, "Hey, that's pretty sweet." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's pretty nice." Uh, I didn't in in the review that's actually posted on the Firearms Insider. I didn't mention that they do a really nice job of rounding all the corners on the riser mount and even on the little button thing there's like no sharp edges whatsoever so that's a good point uh, it raises your optic 0.62 inches which is 5 eighths of an inch for people who can't convert stuff uh, and it is three and a half inches of usable rail space uh, it's 1.1 inches wide which you don't really notice when it's on the rail uh, so that's helpful it weighs in at a light 3.4 ounces so even with whatever mechanism they have in there it is still quite light uh, this particular one I don't know if you can see these little raised pieces here they're about yay long three quarters of an inch those are what actually lock on to the rail when you lock it in so that gives you good solid lockup uh, let's see the total thing with the button extended is 4.3 inches and so if you have like a backup iron sight or something to that effect make sure and give yourself enough room to get your finger in there to push the button uh, that's a big help since I proceeded to put it on backwards once on mine and it was right next to the backup iron sight and of course I had to take the iron sight off so I could get the scope turned around you know it happens to everybody uh, they also kinetic development group also makes a mount very similar to this that's not a riser mount uh, so you can get it for the aimpoint micro aimpoint pro c3 and comp m4 and I saw the other day that it looks like they're also making that ma this style mount for the new Trigicon MRO. So that wasn't when I wrote the review, they didn't have that one out. So the claim to fame on this thing is it's a quick attach riser mount and it maintains zero and it's lightweight. The target market is if you need a riser mount, and you tend to take optics on and off a lot this could be the ticket uh, the features and benefits quick attachment quick removal which we kinda went over super easy to use super solid when it's installed uh, you can't move this thing if you tried I don't think uh, there's zero point of impact shift and it is lightweight uh, it comes in black that's pretty much all you get uh, but like I said, you can get it for the Aimpoint Micro, the Pro C3, and Comp M4, and Trigicon MRO. Uh, because it is fairly new, I could not find any other reviews on it. And I actually did a lot of searching, but of course, so if I search now, there's probably one. But, you know, uh, the price point on it is a little spendy for what it is. It's $99 retail, and MSRP is $99. Uh, the only place I found besides Kinetic Development Group that has it is Brownells. So if you need it now, Kinetic Development Group, you can order it from them, or use the affiliate Brownells link would be probably even better. Uh, so our rating, the pros, quickly attaches, removes, holds zero, even if you beat on it. Uh, mounts in extre is extremely sturdy and for people like Ryan the only knobs sticking out are what you use what you mount on it so there's no knobs sticking off the side so like with a normal riser mount you'll have those knobs and then your ring knobs or whatever else you put on it. Uh, the cons are it's a riser mount so you're not going to use it for everything it's a little pricey for being a riser mount uh, kinda I'd like it to be less expensive but you know since they sent it to me for review I can't complain 
Uh, I would probably buy one if I needed one after actually using it, so that's a good thing. Uh, the cons were in price. They don't make yet, which I would really like to see them make, is some sort of AR-style optics mount. Uh, think, you know, the worn uh, scale mount or like the Nikon mounts, the one-piece AR-style mounts for actual optics, not just a riser mount. Something like that would be really cool if they would make. So I gave this thing an 8.5, which is great, and like I said, you can't really go wrong with it. And I think that's about it. Cool. Now, my only question is, what is that atrocious yeah, thing Yeah, I was looking all over the site to it? find one. I have an atrocious old pro point that has has been on my sub gun for probably ten years. <laughs> so, if that helps you here, is that better? Yeah. Yep. So, it's the one side I have that I figured it has survived everything. So, I figure if it can survive thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds of 9mm on a sub gun, it probably can survive anything else. And it's been on an AR for quite a while also. So It just has atrocious knobs for you. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Tony? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, I was looking for an AR mount too. I mean, it really makes sense. Because um, when I mount my optic, whatever I choose, I'm going to put it on that AR mount, and I want one with quick disconnect. Um, I've been watching Kinetic Energy Group <clears throat> since they came out, and um, it seems like that would be something they make, because I like a magnified optic, like a 1 to 6 or 1 to 4, but yes, I would like a quick detach. And it looks like they're quick detach for their, what is it, the comp uh, and the aim, the aim point. Um, is a one-piece mount. So if they could make that for other things, you know what I mean? So I can put a regular. It would be cool because it's $139, so that's about industry standard, right, for one of those, like a quality one? Yeah. Actually, it's kind of cheap for a quick disconnect, right? I Yeah, it's just like the riser mount, which I have, is a little expensive, but like the ones for the aim points, those are right on par with everybody else's. Uh, yeah, I will. I will say, and I can't really tell, but on their main page, they have a picture of uh, looks kind of like a scar. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And I don't, but they have an optics mount on it, and I don't know if it's one of theirs or somebody else's. So maybe they've thought of that, and they're thinking about doing some sort of optics oh, yeah, mount. Right. Uh, they also I manufacture, so. yeah, I do too, uh, the MREX, which is kind of the same type of deal, I think, for the M-Lock system. It snaps on, snaps off. I think TJ has one of those products, and it's like a little rail at the, for their connect system that goes on that, on an M-Lock rail, and it just kind of snaps on, snaps off also. All right. So yeah, if you wanna, if you want some other mount, write him an email and harass him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a Scar Seventeen that they're uh, showcasing. Yeah, that's a, that's kind of what I thought. But and you I'm can't really. Seeing... Oh, no. I'm seeing like stuff to put on my Scar. Yeah, they have that new charging handle. I heard. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Great, more money. Yeah. yeah. So I almost wish that they made one that was a little bit taller. I know, like tall risers are kind of uh, an eyesore, but something like if you got an Aimpoint or like a Vortex Spark Two, or at its lowest configuration, you know, it usually sits as low to the rail as possible for certain guns, um, where you you have more of a sloping stock for cheek weld. But if you could take your red dot, like your Spark 2, 
with no riser and attach it to this side lock, maybe like a, call it the side lock like XL, and it puts it at the um, one third or absolute co witness height. That way, it's a lot easier to put on different guns versus, uh, at least what I know, you have got to use that torque wrench to get that one little screw out of that riser, at least for the Spark 2. Um, if you put that on this as I see it, it wouldn't be, it'd be like an upper one third co witness, it almost looks like. It would, wouldn't be tall enough. Right, uh, because they're fairly small. Yeah, the advantage with this is it's a 34 millimeter tube. So it sits the dot up where you can see it reasonably well, and it's just like an actual co-witness. But with something yeah. smaller, I, I know what you're saying. It would be too low so or too high, depending on which mount you have on. But it would be perfect if it was tall enough, especially for red dots like that. That way... Mm -hmm. It would be easy to throw one on your AK, throw one on your AR, throw one on one of your pistol builds, um, you know. But give it give automatically a QD function to right. your 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 higher price red dot. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. So that's that's your one slice of brilliance for today, guys. Um, <laughs> so th thanks for that review. Awesome. Oh stuff. yeah. Yep, anytime, anytime. Now i got to put it back on here in the right spot. There, that's where it went. And, and you're done. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and I'm done. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty uh, cool. So we don't have any tech gadget or app this week, um, and we do not have any listener feedback, uh, or at least I, I did not check. Um, so next up, we're going to give the floor to Tony so we can talk about his second is for everyone diversity by second is for everyone diversity shoots and how Ryan has a speech impediment. Um, but go ahead, bud. What do you got? All right, mumble lips. Thank you for that introduction. It was real smooth. <laughs> I really appreciate the time you give me every week. Um, second is for everyone shoot. Uh, goes down at Gun for Hire Range, Woodland Park, New Jersey, February 4th at 6 p.m. The last one was a smashing success. Uh, we had a lot of stuff provided by sponsors, so pretty much just showing up got you about $30 worth of stuff. I'm taking it. Um, you can check out uh, Simon Says Trains on Instagram and look at some of the stuff I just had for everybody that showed up. Um, new stuff coming out this time. Uh, actually different vendors are providing me with stuff and it's going to be a lot of fun it's a chance to shoot a ton of rifles from different things including um, the firearms that actually Gun for Hire has which is over 200 that you can rent and they set us up with a special price for 99 um, that's right free 99 for rentals for anyone coming to the event I don't know if it covers their gold plated Desert Eagle or not but if you want to shoot one of those, you can go there and take it up with them, rent it, and shoot a deagle. Um, again, my whole point of this Second is for Everyone is to get people out, get them, get them into the political side of the Second Amendment. Last time I had the heads of three different organizations in New Jersey come out and speak. Uh, I'm going to start looking for some different people to speak, or maybe even same people, um, but break it up. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of gear that you can win. Um, and really it's a great party and a great time to socialize with people from many different backgrounds at one of these events. This will be my one year anniversary having these, so come out, make it special, hang out with us, and have fun. Thanks a lot. And oh, by the way, if you want to find it, there's a link in the show notes, and you can go straight to my Simon Says Train page, or you can go and check out Simon Says Train on Instagram. Thanks a lot, guys. Yep, no problem. The, uh, Pretty much one of the only reasons to visit New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we had some guys from out of state, and they contact me every time. Okay, what can I bring into the state? I'm like, anything fun. So if it has a collapsible stock, don't bring it in. If it has more than 15 rounds, don't bring it in. Matter of fact, just don't bring any guns in. Come on in, and we'll have to fire off. There you go. Uh, so that said, we're going to wrap up the show. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining me on this episode. Uh, send questions or comments to cross at firearmsradio.tv 
Remember to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review, and check out all the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv slash iTunes. And be sure to visit the Firearms Insider for reviews and industry coverage, especially with uh, SHOT Show 2016 coming up. Uh, we'll be sure to provide lots of coverage on that um, via the, uh, the Facebook, the social media, and the Firearms Insider page. Um, so everyone have a good, safe week, and have a safe uh, New Year's Eve. More importantly, if you're going to drink, don't drive. Um, you have a DD. Be smart about it, guys. And I'll see you in the New Year 2016. Yep, Happy New Year. Yep, thanks, guys. Be safe. Happy, happy New Year. Yep. Happy New Year. <laughs>